Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Katherine Basu. And are you currently preparing for the Boston Marathon? If you are, or if you have a friend who is, you definitely want to listen to today's episode. Share it with that friend because my guest, Mark Minicello, who was on the show yesterday to share some general running tips, is back. Basically, as I often do with runners, we talked a lot and I asked so many questions that it was more information than for just one episode. So he's back and I'm sharing the second half of our conversation, which includes more marathon specific running tips for you from Mark's background as a marathoner himself and a running coach and someone who has run Boston and will be running Boston with you this Monday. So he also has some Boston marathon specific tips and some tips based on the current predicted weather. So if you want to enjoy those and maybe calm your nerves a little bit about what you're going to wear, I think you'll enjoy this episode. So without further ado, let's get back to Mark. If you missed yesterday's episode, don't forget to listen to that at some point. But here we go with some tips for marathoning and Boston. So another a question that we talked about before we recorded that I definitely wanted to make sure we shared for the listeners was about this question, what makes a great marathon runner, especially for those people getting ready for, for Boston. So as I mentioned to you, I, I had lunch with uh, coach Larson. And for those who don't know coach Larson, he was a U- UCLA track coach and Meb's coach. And I posed that question to him, picking his brain from his experience and without missing a beat, he's like a great marathon athlete is someone who can think at mile 20 mm. and and it's true the race doesn't start until mile 20 up until then it's a 20 mile warm-up sure. then you have a 10k and you have to be able to think on your feet sure you know the people that are running that you know if you're racing against somebody you need to you need to be able to size them up see what the strengths are or the weaknesses they have at that moment or What's your plan? What's the terrain? How many corners do you have? Mm. You know, are you going to be able to calculate your finish time mm-hmm. if you're trying to hit a goal? Mm-hmm. So these are all the things you, you need to be able to think at mile 20 instead of being on cruise control. That's when you actually have to think and start thinking about the race, because until then you should be on cruise control. In mm-hmm. mile 20, you take the cruise control off and then you really have to buckle down. Mm-hmm. So, and I don't know if, you know, you can, go, you can look at Meb. Meb may not be the fastest athlete, but Meb is probably the most brilliant tactician. Sure. He knows when to push, knows when not to push, knows when to outkick someone. And so, again, you have to be able to think. I've known athletes that could easily Boston qualify and they get to mile 20 and suddenly they don't, you know, they finish the race and they don't Boston qualify. Mm. And, and it's like, well, what happened? And they're like, I don't know. I was on pace at mile 20 and then I, I didn't look any longer at my pace band. And, you know, and you kind of scratch your head, like, wait a minute, there, there's no reason why you shouldn't have Boston qualified. You felt strong. You were on pace through mile 20, but then you stopped looking at you. That's when you're supposed to start looking at your pace. Right, band so right. you can calculate the map. <laughs> These are the things that you need to know. And, mm-hmm. and again, what makes, you know, you have to be able to think. So the, a question, Catherine, that, or something that you and I talked about before. Yeah. When you figure out what pace you need to run, if you're trying to qualify for Boston or, or if you're just trying to hit a time. And the answer is for a marathon, nobody runs 26.2. Mm-hmm. Nobody runs the tangent a hundred percent. It's impossible. 
you may be lucky and run 26.25, mm-hmm. but realistically, most marathons, you're going to run about 26.4. Mm. So that's a quarter mile extra distance that you're going to run. Now, if you're trying to qualify for Boston, and I'll just use a, a four hour qualifying time, that's about a nine, 10 pace mm-hmm. to qualify to come in sub four. But if you run 26.4 miles, you actually need to run a, a 903 pace. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's enough to make a runner cry. Right. <laughs> if he's on pace, he thinks he or she is qualified only to find out that he had to run an extra quarter mile. And, and how many of the athletes that you know have said, oh, my Garmin's off. Right. I ran, you know, it, it, your Garmin's not off. It's, you didn't run the tangent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you have to be able to think, you have to figure out, you have to be able to calculate this. No, I, 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 it's, it's funny, but you know, I'm laughing, but it's, uh, it's not funny when, when you uh, are the one that, that ran the extra and, and, and are surprised that the time is not, not the time. So. Absolutely. And it's heartbreaking, you know, and I've known some people, you know, you're trying to run for the Olympic trials, Mm. you know, that, I mean, think about that one. You have to be able to calculate that extra distance. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, six months or a year or or life's work and it goes out the window because you missed the standard because you overran the the distance. These are things you have to think about. Yeah. And that's what makes a great, you know, a great runner is someone who can think. Oh, for sure. It comes back to that. Mental piece you know, again, then the mental component again we talked about earlier. Yeah, no, it it, it is. It's it, the mental component is huge. See? It's not just running. Running's running's part of it. Right. But it's not all of it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we are getting close. Uh, you know, we have Boston coming up this weekend. I know you're running it. Mm-hmm. Any any mm-hmm. tips for runners? I know we we just got that email about how it's not gonna be great weather although hopefully they're wrong any any general tips for boston or or tips if it is not so great weather this time around for the listeners hi friends it's Catherine, and if you are joining us and only have 15 minutes today and are using the podcast to get in an out and back walk of that length that sound was your halfway point reminder you will want to turn around now all right back to my conversation with mark yeah, I mean, honestly, Vaseline your feet, <laughs> Vaseline some of your body. Mm-hmm. That'll actually uh, repel water and keep insulate you to a degree. Mm. Um, as far as you know, race race tips. It's you know you're gonna be it's gonna be cold. I do better in cold weather as long as there's no headwind. Sure. You know you should be fine. Uh, the key is to stay warm at the beginning. You can go to an REI store or a camping store and buy a poncho. Those plastic ponchos will keep you warm and, and somewhat waterproof, mm-hmm. um, you know, prior to the race. And then once the race starts, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, with Boston, Boston's a very tactical course. Mm. So for those who have never run Boston, yeah, the excitement and the adrenaline that you will have at the starting line is like no other. Sure. You have to hold back. Do not run faster than your race pace. The first six miles of the course are pretty much downhill. Mm. So everyone gets sucked up into the vortex of every other athlete there. Mm-hmm. And, and suddenly you're running 20 seconds faster than your race pace. Mm. and that's a sure sign to blow up. Mm -hmm. So the first six miles, you have to hold back. You're going to feel great. You're going to, you know, the adrenaline will be pumping, and I can promise you there will be a lot of athletes passing you. Sure. Don't get sucked up. Sure. Hold the pace. When you get to mile six, you can start to increase your pace to race pace. The first six should be a warm-up. Mm-hmm. settle in between six and 10, 10 to 14 will be rolling hills. Mm. 
and then when you get to mile 16, you hit Heartbreak Hill. Now, Heartbreak Hill is a misnomer. It's not a hill. It's four hills. It starts at 16 and finishes at 20 and a half. So if you start this race fast, you will drain your energy. And when you hit mile 16 and have to go up four hills, you won't have the energy to survive it. Mm -hmm. So, so if you pace the first six slow, and then the next 10, you can pick your pace up to what is race pace. Once you get over the last hill, the fourth hill, which will be about mile 20 and a half, you have six miles downhill. It may not feel downhill, but it is. <laughs> and you can make that, you can make up all the time that you lost at the beginning and up on the hills, you can make it all back those last five miles. So the key for Boston is definitely pacing. Mm. I love it. Very cool. I'm excited for you for, for, you know, being able to come out and, and run Boston. How many people do you guys have out for the club coming out to Boston this weekend? Okay. So the first year of the club, which was 2015, we had six of us. Mm -hmm. Let's fast forward to 2019. So this year, we have 43 qualified. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So, so yeah, so we have, a, we have a pretty large contingent going to Boston this year. Oh, that's awesome. I might have to make a sign. I, I, I told you I'm going to be sidelined. It was going to be my first, first one, but I'm still going to be out there cheering. Maybe I have to make a, a sign for you guys. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Well, I'll be looking for you in, with uh, 20,000 of our other fans. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so. Honestly, if you've never run Boston, it, there's nothing like it in the world. All marathons are unique, but Boston is by far the, you know, the granddaddy. Well, you, cause you've run several, you've, you've done all the world marathon yeah. majors. I mean, I see, I, see, I, I told you I wasn't going to keep you for that long and now I, I want to keep you, uh, you know, for several hours, but, but do you have any, <laughs> any, I mean, there's so, so there, so you think that it's, you know, one of your I, I, uh, top there, even, even going throughout the world running marathons. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've done the six majors. Yep. I've done New York twice, Chicago twice. This will be my third Boston. Mm -hmm. And they're all different. Uh, sure. Berlin was different. Tokyo. I mean, they're all different. Yeah. But Boston is the oldest. Mm -hmm. And when you step off a plane into Boston, the city just embraces you like no other. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're all unique. Um, yeah. And say I haven't I haven't run it yet, but watching it, this is probably it's over ten years ago. I watched it with my cousin, who's also a runner, and you know I had this like notion maybe one day being you know a cross country athlete, like maybe one day I'll run a marathon, but not not really taking that you know dream seriously, thinking like yeah I don't know if I really want to take the time to train for one, but it would be nice to put on the you know cross off the bucket list. But watching Boston is what changed it for me. You know once you see that, it's it's hard as a runner not to want to be a part of it. So absolutely you get sucked in and no <laughs> one runs one marathon there's a saying in the community you you either run one and you're done mm. or you run one of many nobody mm -hmm. runs two mm -hmm. <laughs> right. so you know i i started for a bucket list and you know 30 marathons later i'm still still going <laughs> and, you know now actually i'm doing the seven continents so oh, cool. I'm actually, I have Antarctica in March of 2020. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah. so I mean, running has brought me around the world that, to places I've never thought I would ever go. Yeah. Oh, that, well, that's really, okay. See, we're going to have to have you back for, uh, for some of these <laughs> conversations too. <laughs> yeah. For post-race breakdown. <laughs> Here's a quick question for you, Mark, before I, I like, you know, I think I'll let you go up and mm -hmm. see, but I have a client <laughs> running London. Um, Later this month, do you have any tips? It's her first marathon, but all you know, and her first London marathon. But any tips uh, you got for that one? Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic marathon. Uh, they there's three different waves, but they all converge at I think mile four oh, okay. on the course. So expect to be tr crowded in a traffic jam. But okay. it's one of the it's a it's an amazing race. The city comes out to cheer, mm. and the and the weather is crazy. 
<laughs> the year that I ran, I got hail, I got rain, and I got sun. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, oh, but it's a beautiful marathon, and, yeah. you know, she'll definitely enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, I really enjoyed talking to you. You know, I, I have to tell you, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to just, like I said, keep keep uh, picking your brain on all these great race and running tips. But uh, thanks for coming on the show. Anything that you want to share with the listeners, you know, either about the running club or words of wisdom or anything else before we officially say goodbye? Uh, just enjoy the journey. Mm. And, and again, don't compare chapter your chapter one to my chapter 20. Right. We're yeah. all out there. It's all about effort. Enjoy it. Have fun. And if you're ever interested, South Bay Runners Club, we've, you know, we got the website and yeah. we'd love to have you come down. You don't have to join. Just come out and join us for a day and see what it's all about. Awesome. I love, I love that. And I definitely have to have to come out once I'm recovered here. <laughs> yes, yes. Please do. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hi, friends, it's Catherine, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Mark and have some good tips that you're going to use when you run your next marathon, whether that is Boston this coming Monday or not. If you missed out on the first half of our conversation, don't forget to go back and check that out. Mark shared some great running tips from his own personal experience and also from his experience as a running coach. If you are headed to Boston this weekend as a spectator or runner, I wanted to remind you that I'm also heading there too. I will be there starting tomorrow. I'm not staying overnight tomorrow, but I will be in town to experience the seminar at the expo. So I'll be there for that. Also on Sunday, pre-race dinner, even though I'm not racing. And then on Monday to cheer you on and hanging out for the post-race party. So if you'll be in town for any of those events, and want to connect, shoot me an email podcast at bitarmadillo.com and we'll try to make it happen. Also wanted to share that I shared this a little bit in today's episode, but I will also be at the London Marathon this year. Super lucky to be able to be a part of these marathons, even if I'm not able to run them this time around. If you are too, you definitely want to check out the episode I did with Lizzie Greminger a few episodes back that is specifically on the London Marathon, so a lot more tips for you there. In addition to Mark's tip, which I did not know about, the fact that it's really dicey, a little challenging there in those first few miles. So check out that. There are tips for you, whether you are a spectator or runner. Lizzie's husband was a spectator, and there were some interesting things that happened, so make sure you check that out for her cautionary tale, and I'm going to try to avoid those mishaps myself, but that's something to check out there, even if you're not running the race. And if you will be in London, wanted to remind you or let you know that we're hosting a pop-up fun run and fundraiser for the nonprofit Get Kids Going. My client Meredith is running for that charity and we're trying to wrap up her fundraising efforts there. So you'll be able to participate in one of three ways. If you won't be in London and want to participate, I'm happy to still have you run as a virtual runner, run your 5k around your town and do the shipping fee for the race medal in addition to your donation. But if you'll be in London, you don't have to pay any extra for shipping. We'll arrange a way for you to pick up the medal in person. And that's the second way to run. The third option is that we have a route set out in London that will go by the Tower Bridge, some street art, and a pub that Jack the Ripper used to hang out at. So I had some great help setting out a really fun route for you guys. And we are finalizing the day that we'll actually go out there and run it, trying to set that up around my client's plans for London. So stay tuned for that. You can get all the details by saving your race medal by going to fitarmadillo.com slash London run and doubly making sure I pack one for you by making your donation through Meredith's fundraising page. So you won't have to pay me. You'll just go and sign up to save your medal through my page fitarmadillo.com slash London run. And then from there, you'll be prompted to go to Meredith's fundraising page so we make sure that you actually made a donation. All right. So excited for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Good luck on Boston if you are running. Good luck on any of your races if you're not running Boston but still running this weekend. I hope to see you there. Subscribe to the show so you don't forget to tune in on Monday. And if you're enjoying the show, don't forget to leave us a rating and review. We greatly appreciate that. All right. 
Enjoy your weekend. Talk to you on Monday. Good luck in Boston. Bye.